Welcome to you. Today we conclude our series on the Psalms. And as I mentioned last time, which better Psalm to end on than the one we know best, Psalm 23. This coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And so we'll be looking at just what it means for us today to be the spirit-filled children of God, especially in the world we're living in now with all the unique challenges which we are facing. But for now, we read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Analogies, word pictures and parables are to be found throughout the Bible. And because of the popularity of Psalm 23, probably the best known analogy which we have is this image of God as a protective shepherd over his flock of sheep. He is our shepherd and we are his sheep. Now, this idea does conjure up some rather romantic or nostalgic notions. But before we get too excited, this is not as high a compliment as we might like to think it is. When we see paintings of Psalm 23, we tend to think of cute, fluffy little lambs with innocent smiles on their faces. But the reality is that sheep are not very bright, which is precisely why they need a shepherd. They need constant supervision because without guidance and protection, they wander off and they put themselves into all kinds of danger. And this is the story of the human race. When we ignore God, when we disobey him, what we do is we wander off without divine guidance and protection. And the consequences of that rebellion are that we expose ourselves to all the danger we see around us. All of the heartache and all of the trauma which we experience in this fallen world is not because our shepherd has been negligent. It's because we, as his sheep, have been stubborn and not very bright, just like sheep. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And in that one verse, we have a perfect description of the fundamental problem of the human race. So in one sense, it is not very, flat, very flattering for us to be compared to sheep. But at the same time, it is also very reassuring. We have a shepherd who knows us intimately, who will do and has done whatever is necessary in order to protect us. And the 23rd Psalm gives us a glimpse into this unique relationship between the heavenly shepherd and his human sheep. We are reminded in these verses that we enjoy a special bond with our shepherd. It's a very personal psalm, and David speaks about this close and personal relationship which he had with God. And it's been said many times, he speaks about my shepherd, not simply a shepherd. David had been a shepherd himself in his younger years. So he understood what it took for a shepherd to be dedicated to the protection of his flock. Things are more mechanical nowadays, but in ancient times, the shepherd was intimately involved in every area of his sheep's life. And to all intents and purposes, the shepherd gave up his family and his own normal way of life and lived with his sheep. But if you think about that, isn't this exactly what Jesus has done for us? He left his throne in heaven. He left the glory and the majesty which goes with that position. And he came to live here in this fallen world with his smelly, his stubborn, but his beloved sheep. Philippians 2 verses 6 to 8 explain what Jesus did like this. It says, who, Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, in other words, held on to, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. 
ancient shepherds lived with their sheep. They knew them by name, and the sheep were used to the shepherd's voice and his presence. And they willingly followed him wherever he led them, and they trusted him to supply every need that they had. And so in Psalm 23, David took this relationship and he applied it to the relationship which he had with God. This is the same relationship which every Christian has with God today because of Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, as he is called in, in Hebrews 13 verse 20. Because of what God has done for us through Christ, we are in an intimate personal relationship with him. Jesus called himself the good shepherd. And in John chapter 10, we are reminded that Jesus gave his own life to save his sheep. This speaks of the intimacy of our relationship with him, how he knows us by name and how he calls us to follow him because we're able to recognize his voice and also we're able to respond in humble obedience to him. And using this, this language of the sheepfold, David describes how the Lord ministers to his sheep. He reminds us that the good shepherd takes his sheep into places where they can feed on the best of grass they can rest from their travels and find refreshment and peace beside these placid pools. In other words, David is saying that those who belong to the Lord are cared for and they have all of their needs met by the shepherd of their souls. And sometimes he leads us through dark valleys. We might not particularly like our valley experiences, but he will be with us through those times. Remember, we are sheep and we are prone to stray. Even though we are Christians, our sin still threatens to pull us away from God. But by his grace, he draws us near. And this is such good news for us, especially when we go through times when our faith is weakened by whatever might be going on in our lives. What we need to remember is that we're not alone because the Spirit of God is always with us. We'll look at that in more detail on Sunday. And we find this theme repeated throughout the, the 23rd Psalm. From the idea of God's leadership in verses 2 and 3, to his presence in the darkest of times in verse 4, to his intimate activity in verse 5, God is always near. He is always there to, to, to lead us, to feed, to protect and to watch over us. And just as a weary sheep is refreshed by grazing in pastures and drinking from these cool waters, so we are refreshed by the Spirit of God. How much of your life was a turmoil without Christ? Now the world might have fooled you into thinking that everything was absolutely fine. But as you look back with the benefit of hindsight, how have you experienced the refreshing change which only God can bring? He has restored your soul. He has brought you a peace which the world neither offers you nor understands. That's what the Good Shepherd has done for you. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But if you have yet to truly experience that kind of peace, then I would encourage you to seek out the Shepherd. Confess your sins. Turn to him in repentance and you will know true forgiveness as you are then clothed in the righteousness of the one who gave his life for you. In the last two verses of the psalm, the, the theme changes. It moves from this picture of a shepherd and his sheep to a host and his guests. And this is what God has done for those who turn to Christ. He doesn't merely forgive us our sins, as wonderful as that is, but goes much further. He adopts us as his own once more. In Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14 give us a wonderful picture of the gospel of Christ. It says he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is what the great shepherd of the sheep has done. If you have put your faith in the saving work of Jesus Christ, you have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. 
And not only that, you have been brought into the kingdom of God. And you have found forgiveness and restoration and righteousness in Christ. A few times over the last couple of months, we have looked at Romans 8 verse 28. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now again, I remind you, this does not mean that all things are good. It was clearly they're not. But what we have is a shepherd whom we can trust. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 also helps us to make some sense of those times when we do feel vulnerable, when we do struggle, when Paul says our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. In biblical times, when guests visited a home, they were anointed with oil by their host. And in fact, it was considered an insult to not have the feet of your guests washed and to have your head anointed. And as we move through this life, God continues to cleanse us. He, he washes our feet, so to speak. He purifies us from all unrighteousness. He anoints us continually with the oil of his grace. His goodness and his blessings are reminders to us that we are precious in his sight. Don't believe the lies of Satan. You are precious to God. So precious, in fact, that he sent his son to die for you on the cross. This makes you of infinite value and worth to him. And it is only in him where you will find complete fulfillment in your life. In Acts 17 verse 25, verse, I beg your pardon, verse 28, we find one of the most beautiful verses in the entire Bible. In him we live and move and have our being. As one of his beloved sheep, you have been adopted into his family and you are an heir with Christ. David then goes on to describe the abundance of God's love and his blessings. His cup has passed full and is now overflowing. And on our journey through this life with the Good Shepherd, we are promised that goodness and mercy will be our constant companions on our way home. Remember, this is not home. We are passing through. But that great shepherd of the sheep gives us grace and strength. The grace and the strength that we need to cope. Now, we might struggle and we might struggle to believe these things at, at times. But there really is nothing in this life that we will face which is greater than God's ability to see us through. Psalm 23 ends with a reminder that this life as we know it will end someday. Now most of us spend our lives desperately fighting against that inevitability. But for the Christian, physical death is an act of God's grace. You may not have heard it put that way before, but it's true. What's the alternative? Do you really want to spend eternity struggling with all of the aches and the pains and the sorrow of this life, with all of the consequences of your sins and the sins of everyone else? Because that's the only alternative. What this means is that death, the greatest enemy and the greatest fear of mankind, becomes for the child of God an act of His grace, because it moves us into a whole new realm to live for eternity. That is the destiny of every beloved sheep of the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The Good Shepherd gave up the glory in heaven, which is rightfully His, and He came here into your dark world to rescue you from certain death. And the cost of that love for you was the death of Jesus Christ. God came near. He gave his life in exchange for yours in Jesus Christ. And our great shepherd brings us all the way from the green pastures and the still waters to the Father's house, this mansion which awaits us. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We will be in the presence of of the one who loves us for all of eternity. John 14 verses 2 and 3.
Jesus says, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. The Savior who died for you also lives for you and cares for you, the way that a shepherd cares for the sheep. And if you can say, the Lord is my shepherd, you can also say, I shall not be in want. One day, if you haven't looked, if you haven't done so already, you'll be able to look back at your life and see that it was only goodness and mercy that got you through, especially through the valley experiences. If life is difficult today, keep following the shepherd. He is faithful to you and he will never lead you where he cannot care for you. May you be blessed as you continue to hold on to the truth and the reality that Jesus Christ gave his life for you. God bless you.